hello America I hope you're doing well now that my camera is actually recording the things that I I'm fucking saying this is my review for 90 day fiance before the 90 days this is gonna be a quick review because I can barely remember what the hell happened it took all of me to say what I said that wasn't on camera so now I'm kind of pissed so here we go we start off with Michael and Angela um if you hear outside noise that's because neighbors don't know how to shut the fuck up anyway um we start with michael and angela angela is still angry because michael went out and got his dick sucked um on purpose and not by accident um they are leaving the resort she says she has his phone she's like um i'm just gonna keep his phone to make sure he's not like what did she say to make sure he's not talking anything about money or scamming me or some shit mentioning anything about money or scamming me or some shit like okay um while they're in the car well while he's putting the bags in the car he's talking to the camera and he's like um i don't want this to ruin my chance to go to america you know i'm trying to go to america to spend time with angela in america because, you know, I want to be with her in America. And, you know, when we when she go back to America, I want to be there going back with her to America. Okay. America. So, they're in the car. They're driving back. He put the bag in the back and um, accidentally hit her with the bag. She, oh, Michael, you're going to give me a black eye. Not seriously, just she annoyed or whatever. Wow, who who would have thought that you go across the country to meet a nigga that you were talking online to and it doesn't go as planned? Wow. Wow. Anyway, so <clears throat> they meet up at a, well, they go to, they meet up. They go to a, um, what was it, like a restaurant or whatever. He's telling her you know i'm sorry about what happened at the resort um she's like i don't know if he's scamming me or you know if um she says something else i don't know if he's scamming me or if this is true love or something or you using me um i just feel like the spark is gone and he was like yeah i, I know i gotta work on myself and she was like, yeah, I said some really hurtful things to you, but you, I said some really bad things to you. But when I get hurt, that's, you know, just what comes out. And so he's like, okay, yeah, baby, I understand. I understand. So she, uh, he leaves. He's like, I got a surprise for you. He brings in this cake. She started eating the cake and shit, happy as hell. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then she forgave him. And I'm like, okay. Is that all that it takes, a cake? And then she's like, I'm, I might put this ice in some place tonight. You was just so mad at him for getting his dick sucked while you two were together. And now you talking about you going to suck his dick with some ice. What is really going on? Okay. What in the hell is this? Anyway, um, we see. I think that's the end of their story. It might be more. You know, uh, if it is, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. I make it all fancy and pretty. You know, I might even do a voiceover. Who knows? Moving on to Tariq and Hazel. Tariq and Hazel are taking an expensive flight because Tariq don't have no fucking money. But yet, he decided to take a flight that was already expensive to get to the Philippines. To get to the Philippines. Now he's taking... A flight in the Philippines to the most beautiful part of the Philippines, which is surely a tourist attraction and going to cost more money. But he thinks that that's going to bring him and Hazel closer together because Hazel is not affectionate. And uh, in the words of Hazel, Tariq is overly affectionate. So um, he's like, I don't really care about leaving Dean here, his brother. Um, you know, if I, if I had to pick an emotion, it would be happy. What the fuck ever. I brought the ring, but you know, I don't know if, if it's meant to be for us. You know, like, 
I got to know that she loves me for me and she's not using me for the money. And I just had one question. What money? Okay. You said you're taking a really expensive flight. People with money don't say I'm taking a really expensive flight. Okay. People with money don't do six layovers and spend 12 hours on a plane because they choose to do that. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so they get to the resort. They chilling, you know. Um, he's like asking her questions, I think. She is, um, you know, a little standoffish like she always is. Somebody said in the comments she was a cyborg, and I'm like, she might be. That makes absolute, absolute sense that she's a cyborg. Um, so they get their drinks or whatever. It starts to rain. He's like, you want to go out in the rain? He's just trying really hard, and so she's like, yeah, so... They go out in the rain. She's laughing. He's like, this is like the happiest I've seen her. She's really excited. You know, this was a really good step for our relationship. Um, also, they haven't had sex. Hazel said, like I mentioned earlier, Tariq is too affectionate and they are not yet married. So she's okay with sleeping in the bed together, but nothing else. Um, he puts the ring on top of the armoire. He puts the ring on top of the armoire, and um, he's, like, they go out. I think they go on the paddle. Not as a paddle boat. They do a boat trip or whatever. They're laying in the, um, they're in the water with the life jackets. <sighs> he's hugging her, trying to be cute with her. She kind of don't want it, you can tell. Um... He, she's like, you know, I love you. And he's like, yeah. Like, um, he felt like he had never uh, heard that a day in his life, and he really needed to hear that. So that made him feel really good. And um, he said, I've been chasing. I finally got what I've been chasing after or what I've been yearning after my whole life. And I said, these are the type of people that goes on this show. People who have been yearning for love, who has gotten so desperate in their attempt to find someone who will notice them as they want to be noticed, that they will travel all across the country. They will spend money that they do not have, money that is out of their ass to go see somebody who, damn, I forgot to close the door, who is not like, they're just looking for a come up now. Sometimes you can find somebody, but really, can you? Um. So I guess Tariq is going to propose to her. He didn't in this episode, but um, her saying I love you was very, uh, it, it made him feel like she really, really cared for him. And that gave him the boost that he needed. So moving on to uh, Rachel and John. Look, just throw Rachel and John away and keep Lucy on the show. Because Lucy don't be doing shit but just like living her life screaming, crying when she... You see she cried when John proposed to her mama because she was like, what in the hell is y'all doing? Y'all just fucking met. Lucy the smartest one on that show. On, in that sack. Whoa, shit, on the show. And Ricky's daughter. Like, come on. So we see we see Lucy and Rachel and her daughter. Um Lu uh Rachel has really big news. Her and John are getting married. They're getting married. Um she's going to go to London and get married to him in uh, a couple of months i think or a month i don't know the the time period i think it's been a couple of months since, since they've seen each other it's been a couple of months since everybody has seen each other it's like a catch up uh episode so she does she go to see the yeah she goes to see the um immigration lawyer the immigration lawyer 
tells them that it is better to move forward as husband and wife because they'll have a stronger case. However, considering that he has so many convictions and um, the translated crimes to and translating the crimes from there to here is going to take a long time process and so y'all could be looking at three years before y'all are in the same place so she's really discouraged but john is like you know i'm gonna do what i can to be with you big homie i love you so she's crying it's just not fair to you people who love each other apart no no one is keeping you guys apart okay no one is this is not the notebook and you are not noah and i forgot the woman's name and ellie her name wasn't ellie you are not noah and that girl and her mama was taking the letters out the fucking mailbox and hiding them so you never knew that he was fucking writing you okay this is not what this is that nigga punch people in the face you can't punch people in the face fuck up niggas teeth fuck up niggas eyes noses jaws you can't do that shit and then say hey and then and then your your last conviction be a couple of years ago a few years ago nigga a few is three you never even specified okay no no you better be glad your ass can get into america if you become her his motherfucking her motherfucking husband the fuck anyway so she um she uh skypes john they're talking She's like, um, he's like, did you invite people to the wedding? She's like, yeah, but no one can afford their motherfucking ticket. I, the only way she can afford this ticket is because of this show. Because I know, but she couldn't afford the dress. I'm sorry. Anyway, so she's like, no one can afford their ticket. And her older, her oldest daughters, hold on, because my brain ain't working. Her older daughter father will not let her take her daughter to England. So her daughter won't be there. Her father won't be there. Her friends won't be there. No one will be there. But yet she still is going to go get married. So she's like, it's just hard, you know. But we want to get married. She's like, maybe if I was having a wedding in my country, then my family could come. Well, shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's not going to happen because that nigga has punched too many people in the face, okay? Not going to happen. So um, <clears throat> the next scene, we see her with this woman who scared the crap out of me because her um, eyeliner was this thick. I just, like... Eyeliner is not supposed to cup. Eyeliner is not supposed to stop right here, okay? That's not the way eyeliner is meant to be, okay? If I had enough energy, I'd go put it on and actually show you. Because I... That's not what you do. Because I saw her holding Lucy in the preview, and I'm like, damn, Rachel, you really is stupid. You let any and everybody hold your damn baby. So they go to the dress shop, and she's known her friend for 21 years, but she, but Rachel has never told her friend Sherry that she needs to stop with that damn eyeshadow, okay? You're not my fucking best friend if you haven't sat me down since we're both in our fucking 30s and tell me, hey, girl, it's over. What? I've known you through high school, through college, 20s, but now we in our 30s, bitch, it's over. Take it off. Give her a makeup remover and say, take it off. I'm here for you, okay? Anyway, so they go into the uh, shop. They're shopping. Sherry can't come. The fuck can't nobody motherfucking come, okay? But she is helping with the buildup of the wedding. Um, oh, while she's on the laptop with John, John says the only thing that is missing is your hair and makeup, and Rachel adds her dress. So this is why she's going dress shopping. So she's going dress shopping. Uh, she sees dresses. She's like, I used to be a size zero. You know, now I had two kids. Now, let me ask you this question because I was very confused. I'm just thinking about it right now. Did she used to be a size zero before she had her first child? Or was she a size zero or whatever? Had her child then came back. And then when she had her next child, she gained some weight because 
Tell me how long ago were you a size zero? She talks about her insecurities because all of John's uh, previous girlfriends were thin with um, blonde hair and blue eyes, and she doesn't fit that. She used to, kind of, but now she doesn't, and she has two kids, and she and she's really self-conscious. So she's in the dressing room trying on the stuff. I, I thought it was kind of weird that her friend wasn't even in there with her because, bitch, I'm about to be in there with you. Like, you know, I'm not about to ask you to see the dress. I'm dead ass about to come in and be like, bitch, come on. You look, you look fine. So the first two dresses, or the first three dresses, excuse me, she didn't like. So they bring her out this really ugly dress that she and her friend really liked. Her friend said John was going to die when he saw her in that. Um, obviously, her friend does not support the marriage. Well, the idea of uh, marrying someone after one face-to-face -face meet. But, hey, you know, she's here because she ain't going to tell her friend no stupid shit. I mean, no shit to help her because her friend hasn't told her to wipe that fucking eyeshadow off her damn face. So, you know, anyway. um, So, the lady, the dress store lady is like, this is $750. She's like... Ooh, I can't afford that. Mm -mm, I can't. I can't. She says, John and I are both living paycheck to paycheck. And I think about it and I'm like, is John, I thought John was living with his mother. Like, you don't, is his mother not working and you're taking care of the household? How are you guys going to even think about doing anything? You live paycheck to paycheck. I thought this nigga had some savings. This nigga's lying to you. He lives paycheck to paycheck and he lives with his mother. Come the fuck on. That's, that's preposterous. That's malarkey. Okay? That's bull crap. Okay? So she's like, I can't get the dress. The lady gives her the card and says, um... If you want to try on the dress again, just come on back. You know, bitch, I'll be here. and Hopefully, you'll have some money. So, I think that's the end of their story. Um, moving on to Darcy and Jesse. Jesse is in Amsterdam. He meets up with his friend. Name I can't remember. Um, they're gym buddies. Uh, he tells him that he's come to the realization that he is done with Darcy. And that's why he is going to New York to tell her. Because, of course, he fly halfway across the country to look at somebody in their face and say, hey, bitch, I'm done. Honestly, that how long are you going to be there? Because is this a day flight? Hey, fuck you and leave. So his friend is like, you can do that over Skype. You can FaceTime her. You can what? What? You about to fly all the way out there just to say I'm done? He's like, well, this is giving me clarity, you know, time to think, blah, 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 blah. Darcy is over here getting her teeth whitened, her veneers refitted, her hair bleached, talking to her cousin. And her cousin is like, girl, you too damn old to be going through this shit. So make sure this nigga is, is not taking you for the loop-de-loop. -loop. And she like, yeah, I know, I just... Darcy does not sound like she... Darcy knows that this nigga is not... That this relationship is not going to work. Like, it's not a hard secret. It's not something that, like, people can deny. This shit is not going to work. Anyway, <clears throat> so she does that. What else does she do? She goes to the dentist. She tells her dentist about a relationship because that's what you do, you know? You dentist about, about your relationship. Um. Um, she gets dressed, she gets her stuff, she goes to New York, she has packed a lot, quite a lot of stuff. She's like, I don't know, you know, um, I could be swept off my feet. Jesse was being really vague with me, I just don't know. I'm just really just like, I don't know. You know, I just feel like once we are together, like, you know, face to face, we can rekindle our love and blah, 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 blah. Jesse says while he is on his way to the airport or whatever, wherever he is, he says, um, I found out something about Darcy while I was in Amsterdam that uh, made me shocked. And um, 
I cannot forgive the incident or forget about the incident. And I knew once he said incident that they weren't going to tell us in this episode. So I just lost interest. I was like, fuck it. Fuck it. I ain't got time. I'll just wait until y'all niggas actually want to tell somebody. Okay. By the time I put out this review, the next episode will be out already. The fuck? Anyway. Um, so, yeah. They don't show them actually meeting up. They just show the lead up to. They just show Darcy going to him. And it's just really sad when you think about it. Because he could have said oh don't pack light oh we won't be here long oh i'm gonna break up with you he could have just said that over the phone i mean not over the phone but over like come on if you want to break up with somebody and like actually get over them then it's best because y'all don't live in the same fucking country you don't have to run into her one day and be like oh um yeah, I'm sorry I didn't call. No, just like, okay, we done, bye, and then hang up. Sorry. So moving on to um, who am I? Oh, Marta and Dia, Dia, Dia. She's supposed to go to Algeria, although she didn't remember that she had to have a um, visa. In order to get a visa, you have to have a letter of invitation. So she FaceTimes uh, Dia and she, another Paul and Karini, but worse. She's writing. They don't even have the, 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 the vocal translator. She's writing that shit out, typing long-ass paragraphs, holding it up. Read this. He reading back. She's like, you promise? He like, you promise? Promise? I promise. What in the hell type? I think um, he, he, he tells somebody off screen, hey, she got a cross. And so she's like, you like my necklace? And he's like, what do you want me to say? I'm Muslim. You're Christian. So she says, and this is what I hate because she's making excuses for this nigga. And she don't even know this nigga. She says, he's not trying to force it on me. He's just like, he really pushing me to convert to Islam. She says, I think he thinks that I'm forcing Christianity on him. And it's just like, bitch. You're not forcing anything on him. I I don't care, okay? I don't care. I don't care. Look at me. I don't care. Did they take somebody off in this episode, or did they show everybody? So did they show seven people this time? Because that's how many people they should have shown. Um, Let's talk about... Oh, yeah, I'm done with that story because it's nothing that excites me. Like I said, she is a stripper and he is a Muslim and she has two children and they don't speak any English and she speaks no Arabic. I think he speaks Arabic and he got mad because she had on the cross. Like he literally hung up the phone. Uh, anyway, Paul and Karini. Paul goes to the cafe to talk to his mother. He's like, do you think we should get a divorce? His mother's like, cut the bullshit. You already know I want you to get a divorce. Fuck, well, y'all niggas moving too fast. You doing too much, and I don't really like it, okay? Okay? And he's like, I mean, yeah, I know. I just, yeah, I know. He like, get your motherfucking head in the game, okay? You got to get your... Get your head in the game. We gotta get it, get it, get it, get it, head in the game. Okay, fuck. Get your head in the damn game. So he hangs up with his mother. Um, he says Karini's mother hates him, and the last time they saw each other wasn't good. Like I say, this is a cap. Like I said, this is a catch up episode, and I'm not editing this. Only the cough that I did because y'all need to see that. 
So he gets a call from Karini's mother that Karini is in the hospital. He trots up to the hospital. Um, he asks her what is wrong. She's like, yeah, I could be pregnant. I took a home test. It was positive, so I'm just here to confirm. The doctor is like, okay, it's going to take two hours to get a blood test back. He's like, they're all like, this is really awkward. I don't want, I don't like X, Y, I don't like X, I don't y, like Y, Z, okay? You get what I mean? They don't like each other, none of them. His mother, her mother is just like, nah, nigga, you can go. You can get the fuck up out of here, bro. You can go, you can go, you can go, you can go, you can go. Go. So, he's like, I love this baby while they're sitting outside waiting. I love this baby. I'm going to be here for this baby. Um, he says something. I can't remember the question he asked. But the mother was like, this baby, if this baby is true, then I love this baby regardless of if you're in the baby's life or not. My Our love for Karini does not depend on her involvement with you. Our love for Karini and the baby. So he's like, Karini, do you want me to leave? She's like, mm, I don't know, Paul. So the doctor called. The doctor like, positivo. She like, oh. Girl, we been knew you was pregnant. Four or five weeks. Anyway. So, yeah. I know how, how is his mama going to feel about this? His mama is not going to appreciate that you're motherfucking pregnant. Well, you're not pregnant. That you got this girl pregnant. Or that you going to take care of her baby that she had before you. Because who says let's work on a child that quickly? Nobody. Anyway, last but not least, we have Ricky Spanish. Anyway, Ricky then just told Jimena that Melissa was the lady that he loved, that he didn't have a connection with, but that he came to visit and that you was the backup girl. So... Uh, Hamina leaves. Hamina's gone for like 20 minutes. Hamina comes back. She like continue. I'm like, that's some boss ass shit, bitch. You better sit the fuck down and tell that nigga to do it, okay? So he's like, yeah, the ring. No, he says nothing about the ring. But he's like, we went, we met at a restaurant. And she's like, so y'all ate dinner and then y'all ate each other. And he was like, yes. And she said, what? And he said, wait, what? She was like. Did y'all have sex? He like, no, no sex. I didn't even kiss her. I didn't even, like, do anything. One thing I'm really trying to understand is do they understand each other? Because he speaks in English and Spanish. She only speaks in Spanish. Does he understand what she's saying? And does she understand what he's saying? Or is there a translator that they don't show up? Because how are they having a meaningful conversation? Anyway, so... um. She like, no, all of this was for Melissa. Like, after Melissa, like, after the whole Melissa thing blew up in your face, you thought that the best thing to do was to come to Plan B. Plan B, Jimena, this is who I am. I'm Plan B, but I'm nobody's Plan B, boo-boo. I punch you in your motherfucking face, okay? So I think she leaves. Um, Ricky was looking all weird, blinking and shit a lot. <clears throat> he got a nervous blink. So, um... He tell her everything, you know, everything. Next morning or next day, she's still there. If you hear little noises in the background, it's because I have a gerbil. I just got a gerbil, and she loves to do stuff. Her name is Jazzy. Um, the next morning, they meet, and he's like, baby, please. So she's like, I don't know if I can trust you, nigga. I don't know, like. He like, I know you love me. You waited for me. You know, you ain't leave. She like, nigga, I was waiting on the boat. She bring up Melissa. Like, um, no, she like, I don't even want to talk about Melissa no more. He like, I'm glad that I got it all off my chest. So I really, really love you. Are we still together? She's like, I don't fucking know. Um, He's like, let's do something fun. Let's not just be here. She's like, oh, yeah, something that you had planned for Melissa. So he's like, no, no, please, let's not talk about Melissa. 
kisses, kisses. And he kissed her hand and he like, give me a smile and she smiled. And I guess they cool. Although, like, a new report came out that it was all a scam. And I'm trying to figure out if it is. But I don't have enough information to say anything. If you like this review, please comment, subscribe, and share. Um, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Brielle. I make beats. I sing songs. If you like what you see, come on along. Thank you all so much. Have a nice day.